Okay, uh, in this video we're going to be talking about uh, volume is generated by cross sections. So let me show you an example of what these look like because they're kind of hard to uh, imagine at first. Once you get the hang of it, they, you know, it's a lot easier. But uh, here's, here's some examples I found online. Um, so these are all the, the, on the white paper here, you've got the curve y equals x squared. So that's just a parabola, right? And so the region is that curve between that curve and the uh, x-axis, it looks like. And we've got, in all four of these pictures, cross sections that are perpendicular to the x-axis. These green ones right here are semicircles with a diameter in that region, okay? Um, over here, it looks like we have isosceles right triangles with a leg in that region, okay? Uh, these two are kind of hard to tell exactly what they are. These ones look like they are rectangles, probably with, uh, so with one edge in, we'll call it the width in the region, and then the height, probably two times the width or something like that, maybe one and a half times the width. They might be squares. It's kind of hard to tell at this angle. Uh, same with this one. These are, these are uh, definitely look more like rectangles um, from this angle. So it's probably with a, the width in the region R and the height maybe looks like smaller. So probably half the size is the width, something like that. So these are, these are shapes that are generated by cross sections. And so when we're, when we're solving these, what we're doing is we're essentially just starting at uh, uh, where the stack begins, so the lower bound, all the way up to the upper bound, and we're just adding up the areas of these shapes um, to create that uh, solid volume. So with that said, let's get rid of that picture. Let's talk about uh, some of these problems. So um, with this one, well, I guess just in general, so the general equation we're going to be using is this. We're going to say, all right, so we've got uh, the integral of, you know, from our lower bound, whatever it happens to be, to our upper bound, whatever it happens to be. And then our integrand right here, so dx or y, whatever, I'll just put dx. Uh, our integrand is going to be the area of the cross section or cross sections, right? Uh, as with that picture I just showed you a second ago, um, let me pull it up again. So the uh, radiuses are going to change, right? The, like, or in, in this, like for this uh, semicircle here, like the radiuses are changing. So the formula for the area will have a variable in it because the areas are changing, right? Uh, I mean, if this was just a straight horizontal line and a straight horizontal line and that was my region, all the circles would have the exact same shape. And so there would no, not be a variable in this equation right here. But since our areas are changing for our shapes, there's going to be a variable in there. Okay, and that's just fine. It's not a problem. So, okay, let's take a look at uh, problem number one. Okay, this problem has three parts to it. Uh, first, let's read the directions. It says, let R be the region bounded by the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared and y equals 0. So, first things first, let's draw a graph of uh, what that looks like get my pen working here. There it is. Okay, so let's draw a graph of what this thing looks like. So I'm going to come down here, draw some axes. Wow, that was really bad. Let's try that again. That's still kind of bad. That's okay. Uh, let's see. So we've got, uh, let's uh, color code these. So let's do this one right here, 4 minus x squared. So this is a parabola. It uh, opens downward because it's negative, and it's just been shifted up four units. Um, you can just plot some points if you want. Plot it on your calculator if you want. Um, but here's what it's going to look like. So if I plug in 0, I get out 4. I plug in 1, and I get out 3. Plug in 2, I'm gonna get, or negative 2, I'm going to get out 0. So something like that. That's what, our, that's what our region looks like, all right? Or the, the top part. And then we got y equals 0 which is the horizontal line right here at zero, so the uh, x-axis, okay? So this right here is our region R. So let me get a, a big R right there. We'll put a, that's our region R, okay? Now let's do this. Let's put it on the outside because we're going to want to draw on the inside here. So our region R is this spot right here, okay? All right, so uh, we've got A, B, and C. The first one is just finding an area. B is finding a volume with cross sections. C is finding a volume with cross sections. So let's start with A first, all right? So find the area of region R. Well, finding area is pretty simple. It's just the, the um, we're, we're stacking rectangles, like so, OK? 
Okay. Um, and we just need, so when we're, we're finding the uh, area, uh, it's just the, the height of our rectangles. And then the dx takes care of the width. So height times width, that gives us our, our areas, and we're adding them all up. Looks like we're adding them up from negative 2 to positive 2. And to determine how tall they are, it's simply the top, what, what's bounding them on top minus what's bounding them on the bottom. So our integrand right here is going to be, 4 minus x squared minus what's bounding them on the bottom, which is 0. So there's our equation. Um, let me just clean that up again. That, that looks a little weird. Negative 2 to 2, uh, 4 minus x squared. The minus 0 doesn't really do anything. dx, there we go. All right, so this is what we're going to type into our, our calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. And we get 10.6666. So we can uh, end up with 10.666 or 10.667, whichever one you want. You can round it up or you can leave it the, uh, the truncated version right there. Anyways, that right there is the region of uh, that area right there. Okay, so now part B. Find the volume of the solid with base on region R and cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis and square in shape. Okay, so uh, these lines that I drew earlier, they were representing, you know, rectangles, like just two-dimensional rectangles, and we're adding up the areas of those rectangles to get the area of this shape. Well, now these lines, they are perpendicular to the x-axis, okay? Now these lines represent the edge of a square. So, for example, I mean, I'm just going to highlight one of them, one of these uh, lines. I'm just going to just pick this one right here. That looks great. So this edge right there, okay? What that green line represents is actually the edge of a square. And so imagine that I could take this up and, and glue this green line to that green line so that way the black part's sticking up out of the shape, okay? And each of those lines represents the edge of a square. So what we are doing on part B is we are adding up these areas of squares, each of these lines represent the edge of a square, from negative 2 to 2. So here we go. So our bounds are going to be from negative 2 to 2. Okay. The area of the cross section. So the cross sections are squares. To find the area of a square, you take uh, whatever um, length uh, this is. Let's just call it, uh, we'll call it, uh, I don't know, A. I was going to call it X, but I don't want to confuse it with the X axis. So we'll just call this, I'll uh, just call it question mark. Question mark times question mark, right? Question mark squared. That's going to give me the area of our square. Right? So how do I determine how long this length is? Well, it's just that length right there, which we had just uh, talked about earlier. To find the lengths of those lines, it's simply the top, how they're bounded on top, minus how they're bounded on the bottom. So my area over here, sorry, that my equation over here is going to be the area of the squares. To find the area of these squares, you take uh, this length, which is top minus bottom, so 4 minus x squared minus 0. So you can put the minus 0 in there. You don't have to. And I want to take that, and I want to times it to itself, right? Because that's this length right here. It's also this length right here. So to find the areas inside here, it's those two sides squared. So it's that squared, dx. And this will find me the volume of this shape, because I am add, this, this finds the area of each of these squares, OK? And I add the areas up from negative 2 to 2. So let's type that into our calculator and see what we get. And I got 34, 34.1333. So 34.1333 um, cubic units, right? So this is square units. This is going to be cubic units because we're talking about volume. So that's the volume of this shape um, if it's made by uh, squares. OK, let's talk about part C. All right, part C says, find the volume of the solid with base on region R and cross se sections perpendicular to the y-axis and square in shape. Does your solid have the same shape as the one from section B? Does it have the same volume? Well, that's a good question. Let's see. I'm going to redraw this down here. All right, so here is our graph. Right, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. It's pretty good, and then I use blue, so do 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 do. All right, 
right, so here's our same exact graph. Okay, we're talking about the same exact thing. Uh, this is region R inside of here. Okay, but this time my cross sections, instead of being perpendicular to the x axis, they are perpendicular to the y axis, like so. Okay, so each of these lines in here, and let me highlight one of them, each of these lines in here represents a square. So once again, I can use this same little guy right here. Uh, this, right, if I were to put some glue on this and have it stick straight up in the air, it would represent a square right here. So now, first question is that they said up here, does your solid have the same shape as the one from section B? Well, uh, let's think about this for a second. On here, as you think about what the three-dimensional shape will look like, right down the center here is going to be the tallest part of our of our figure right this is gonna this guy right here makes the biggest square right that that length right there makes the biggest square and so it's gonna have a nice little ridge right in the middle of it okay our biggest and then on and then it's gonna taper off on the back end here right it's gonna taper off these are gonna be really smaller now on this one uh, something different is happening our largest square is gonna be right along here on the x-axis okay and it's all it's one flat surface. I mean, you could you could just put this up against the wall. It's a nice flat surface. I mean, this side is flat uh, flat surface too, I guess. But um, uh, it doesn't taper off at all. It's just a square, right? It tapers off going this direction. So they do not have the same shape. Okay. So there's our answer to this. Does your solid have the same shape as the one from section B? The answer is no. They do not. Okay. Does it have the same volume? I don't know. Let's find out. So this time. Um, I need to find this distance right here, all right? Um, so what we can do is, since it's with per perpendicular to the y-axis, what we can do is uh, figure out what uh, these equations are, like um, figure out what they are in terms of y. Because when I plug in numbers into this for x, it's giving me the distance here. I want the distance this direction. So let's solve this for x. Let's get uh, x by itself. So we've got y equals 4 minus x squared. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Okay, multiply both sides by a negative. So I get negative y plus 4 equals x squared. To get rid of the square, I'm going to take the square root. Okay, negative y plus 4 equals x. And when I take the square root in the middle of a problem, I have to consider both the positive and negative versions. Okay. Uh, so I actually come up with two different equations to represent this shape right here. Uh, you'll notice if I plug in, uh, let's plug in positive 1. If I plug in positive, oh, sorry, let's plug in positive 3. I'm looking for this point right here, which the y value. So it's 1 comma 3. So the y value is 3. Let's plug in 3 for y. Negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1, and I get out with a, with, um, I want to get out a positive 1, so the positive radical, negative y plus 4, is, represents this line right here. Okay, in fact, I'm going to give it a different color. So this side right here is the positive square root of negative y plus 4, which means this one over here, the equation for this, is negative square root of negative y plus 4. Okay. So since we've turned it on that side right here, when I want to find the area of this of the shape, I'm going to be dealing with uh, dy. Okay. Because uh, I'm going this direction. Um, my bounds now are going to be from 0. They're stacked here from 0 all the way up to 4. Okay. So from 0 to 4. And let's see, how can we get this distance right here? Well, it's symmetrical. So really, just use this value right here will get me um, will get me this much of it right there. Right? It's the distance to the y-axis. So if I just times this by 2, that will get me the length of my side of my uh, square. So let's come down here in the integrand. So if I take 2 times the square root of negative y plus 4, okay, that will give me my edge. Okay, that green line right there, that's that length of that green line. Okay, um, and then it's got a variable in it because it's changing sizes, right? Uh, well, to find the vol area of that square then, I'm just going to take that value, including the 2, and I'm going to square it. 
And that right there is the area of, this, of these squares that are inside there. And I'm going to add them up from 0 to 4. And we just type that into our calculator. And we get exactly, that's interesting, exactly 32. Okay, that is the volume of our shape as our squares are perpendicular to the y-axis instead of perpendicular to the x-axis up here. So let's look at these other questions. Does your solid have the same shape as the one from section B? We already talked about it. No, they do not. So uh, they do not have the same shape. And as we can see from our answers here, from answer B and answer C, does it have the same volume? They do not. In fact, this one actually has more volume than this one does. So nor do they have the same volume. Cool. And that takes care of problem number one. Okay, problem number two. Let R be the region bounded by the graph of y equals sine of x and, and the x-axis between x equals 0 and x equals pi. So it looks like we've got two problems here. Part A is find the volume of the solid based on region R, cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. And we're dealing with equilateral triangles. That'll be fun. And this other one, find the volume. All right, so let's just with cross section semicircles. All right, cool. So let's first, let's figure out this uh, region, shall we? So, so let's see, graph. We are, okay, y equals sine of x, so let me use some color here. So y equals sine of x, so counting by pi halves, so this is pi halves, this is pi right here, so negative pi halves, negative pi, uh, 1 and negative 1. So here we go, so sine looks like this. And the x-axis that's easy enough. So that's this part right here. And we are going from 0 to pi. So just, just this little region right here. That's all we're doing. Okay. So part A, find the volume of the solid with base on region R. So region R is this area right here. And cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. So perpendicular to the x-axis. Here's my cross sections. And the cross sections are equilateral triangles. So let me highlight one of these cross sections. Uh, let's do, we'll do it in red. I'm, I'm just going to pick randomly. We'll just do this one right here. So this cross section right there. That little value right there represents the edge of an equilateral triangle. Okay? So if I had some glue, I'd glue that red, red to red, and these triangles would be sticking up in the air. So what we want to do is, uh, so this is part A, we want to add the areas of these triangles from 0 to pi. And here's the equation for the area of the triangles. And there's being stacked perpendicular to the x. So this is going to be in terms of x. In fact, these are x values, right? So this is all going to be in terms of x. Here's the tricky part, is how do you find the area of an equilateral triangle? Well, let's think about this for a second. Let me uh, blow that triangle up a little bit. So, whoa, that is. I mean, it'll still work, but I'm not used to drawing equilateral triangles that way. That's, oh, I can't draw a triangle to save the life of me. Here we go. That's somewhat better. It's not quite equilateral, but that's okay. All right, so just imagine this is an equilateral triangle. I'm just going to use x to represent the edges here. So uh, that side is x, this side is x, this side is x, right? Because it's an equilateral triangle. Well, if I cut this sucker right in half, okay, and make a 90 degree angle, Okay, equilateral triangle, the angles are all 60 degrees. So this is a 60 degree angle, this is a 30 degree angle. So let me blow that up so we can play around with that. So this is just a blown up version of that. So this is 60, this is 30, because it cut that angle in half. This is 90. This side is still x. This side is now half of x. And if you remember your uh, special right triangles, or if you don't, it's just uh, simple trick stuff. Uh, but this is the square root of 3 over 2, x, okay? So that's the sides of my, of my triangles here. So to find the volume, I'm sorry, the area of this triangle, it's 1 half base times height. So I've got 1 half times the base, which is 1 half of x, times the height, 
which is the square root of 3 over 2, x. Multiply all that stuff together, and we get the square root of 3 over, um, I've got too many things going on here. What am I got going here? Oh, I see what I did. I forgot. <laughs> We're finding the area of this half, right? So the area of this piece, right, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 and uh, x squared, right? But keep in mind, I just found half of the triangle I need, right? I just found this area over here. So I need to times it by 2. So it's actually 1 fourth. There we go. Square root of 3 over 4 x squared. That is how you find the area of any equilateral triangle where this side is your... Um, uh, where that side is your, x is your, um, the side of your triangle, okay? So let's come back over here. Um, so this is the, uh, is this piece right here, okay? I used x, I don't want that to be confusing because um, you know, I'm not talking about x values, I'm just my unknown, okay? So this length right here is that right there. So to find that length, it's simply just the top minus the bottom, so it's sine of x minus zero. So for this triangle right here, this uh, the area of this triangle is going to be square root of 3 over 4 times this length, which is sine of x squared. Okay, so that's how I find the area of this triangle. So that's what I put over here. Square root of 3 over 4 uh, sine of x, and the sine of x is being squared, sine of x squared. Okay? And there's our formula for finding the volume of this shape where the cross sections are equilateral triangles. Let's type that into our calculator. And we get 0 0.6801. So 0 0.680 is our answer to part A. That is the volume of that shape. Okay, part B. Let's come down here, part B. Find the volume of the solid based on region R and cross sections, once again, perpendicular to the x-axis. If the cross sections are semicircles, okay, so I can use the exact same diagram right here, um, and uh, these are now semicircles with, uh, or I should say uh, the diameter, so these are, these are gonna be the diameter uh, in that region right there, okay? So, instead of this red line marking the edge of a triangle, that red line for part B marks the diameter of a semicircle. Okay, so we are once again adding these areas of semicircles, our shapes are semicircles, from 0 to pi. Uh, I just need to find the area of my semicircles and dx. So to find the area of a semicircle, area of a circle is pi r squared. So the area of a semicircle is the same thing, just cut in half. Okay, so keep in mind this red line represents our diameter. So the diameter is top minus bottom. Okay, so the diameter in this case is sine of x. Okay, uh, but I want the radius, which is half of that. So the radius is sine of x. Sorry, that's a, I was supposed to underline the radius. Sorry. So underlining radius, sine of x divided by. 2. Okay, so that's our radius. So our equation is going to be, I'm going to do pi halves, I'm just going to stick the 2 underneath the pi, uh, and then it's sine of x divided by 2, and then I'm going to square it. And we type that in our calculator and figure out what it is. And we get z 0 8. So you could do 0 0.616, or you could round it out to be 0 0.617. And that takes care of uh, problem number two. Okay, so problem number three. Uh, let R uh, be the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals e to the x, y equals x cubed, and the y-axis. Okay, so, all right, so far, part A is just simply finding the uh, area of R. So first thing we need to do is graph it. This one's a little bit trickier. You can do this one by hand and see which one's like on top and which one's on, which one's on bottom. The tricky part is going to find out where they intersect at and you will need to use a calculator for that. So let me show you what this uh, uh, thing looks like. Alright, so here this red line is uh, e to the x. 
Uh, so let's uh, write that out. So this line right here is e to the x, and this line over here is whatever the other one is, x cubed. So that is x cubed. And this point up here is where they intersect at. All right, so since most of you are going to be using your graphing calculator to figure out this point, I wish I could like show my calculator up here so I could, I could show it to you. So you just kind of have to you know, follow along really quick. So what you want to do is you want to graph these two lines, okay? And once you get them graphed, um, one of the top menu things is calc. You're going to go to calc, and then uh, option number five is intersect. And then what's going to happen is you're going to see a little spider guy. It's going to appear somewhere on, whoops, let's do black. Um, it's going to be a little spider guy. Uh, that's what it looks like to me, a little like, thing like that, little X, that appears flashing on one of the lines. Um, it's just going to ask you which two lines do you want to find the intersection of, because you might have more than two lines on your graph. On ours, we should only have two. So you get that uh, spider guy kind of close to where it looks like they intersect, just in case there was more than one intersection point. And then you would press Enter, and then another spider guy will automatically appear on the other line. And you get him kind of close to where the intersection is. You know, this is close enough. I mean, there's no other intersection, so we're not, it's not a problem. Um, and then you press enter, and then it will say something like guess. Um, and it will uh, get guess, question mark, hit enter one more time. And then it will uh, give you the x and y values of your intersection point. Okay? Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's how you do it using the, the, TI, the TI calculators. Okay, so uh, let's do this. So now uh, we've got our endpoint. So here we go. Let's uh, do this problem. We've got part A. So we're finding the area. So that's simply just taking top minus bottom. So our red lines, so we're going from 0 to this point, which the x value is 1.857. Always go out to three decimal places. So 0 to 1.857. And we have our top equation is e to the x minus the bottom equation, which is x cubed uh, dx. And we just type that into our calculator to get our answer. And we got 2.4315. So 2.431 or 2.432 uh, would be the area of that region right there. All right, so now let's take a look at um, part B. Find the volume of the solid with base on region R. So that's this little space right here. So region R is this area right here, OK? And cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. So there are cross sections are going like this, OK? Uh, the cross sections are triangles uh, with height equal to three times the length of their base. So let's highlight one of them. Okay, so I'm just going you know, to highlight any one of these. I'm just going to do right here. So that line right there represents the edge of a triangle with height equal to three times the length of their base. Okay, so the base, this is going to be our base on the base. Okay, so that's uh, going to be here like this. And then we've got triangles three times that length, so like pretty tall, ugly-looking triangles. Okay. Um, Well, I guess we don't necessarily know it's a right triangle. We just know that the uh, that the height, the distance from this point to this to this base right here, is three times the length of this uh, uh, base right here. Okay, so part B. We are once again adding up these areas from zero to that point. So zero to one point eight five seven. Okay. And then the area of the cross sections, to find the area of our triangle, it's going to be 1 half times our base. Our base is our top minus bottom, e to the x minus x cubed. 1 half base times the height. The height, it says, is 3 times the length of the base. So 3 times the length of the base, e to the x minus x cubed. I mean, do a lot of cleanup work that will make it a lot easier to type into your calculator. So this is 3 times a half, so it's 3 halves uh, e to the x minus x cubed, and there's two of them, so it's squared. So this right here would be a good thing to type in your calculator. So that's the area of our triangles. So 3 halves e to the x minus x cubed squared dx. 
Type that into our calculator and see what you get. Get 5.267, I'm sorry, that was a big gap, 0.2672. I was doing it without looking. So our answer is 5.267. That is the volume of the shape generated by uh, really tall triangles uh, with cross sections perpendicular to the x axis. All right, part C. Um, find the volume of the solid with base on region R and cross sections perpendicular to the y axis. And the cross sections are rectangles with height equal to six times the length of their base. Okay, so I, went, I took the liberty of already erasing our stuff from the previous problem, so we had some room to write. Because instead of having our lines go vertically like this, our. Uh, oops, I'm still on an eraser. Come on, pen mode. Is that pen? There we go. Um, now our lines are horizontal, like so. Okay, so let me highlight one of them. Uh, just randomly choose one. I'm gonna um, choose. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna choose this one right here. Okay, so that length right there represents the base of a rectangle uh, that has a height equal to six times the length of the base. So we thought the triangle was funny looking. This is gonna be a really tall rectangle. So it looks something like that. Okay, um, so except for that's not a very good looking rectangle. Let's try that one more time. Sorry, I'm a little, I should just come to grips with the fact that I cannot draw very well on this. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so this little green line matches with that green line, so this is sticking up, right? Now, uh, this problem is a little bit different than the part B because uh, these are perpendicular to the Y, so we wanna do these uh, in terms of Y. In the past two ones we've done in terms of X. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what these equations are in terms of uh, y instead of in terms of x. So let's do this one first. y equals e to the x. We need to get the x by itself. Well, to undo this, we'll just rewrite this as a logarithm. So this is really log base e of y will give me the exponent x. Or in other words, log base e is natural log. So natural log of y equals x. That's uh, this equation written in terms of y instead of in terms of x. And then we've got y equals x cubed. So to get x by itself, we'll just take the cubic root of y or raise y to the one third. And there are two equations. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna erase this x cubed and erase this e to the x and replace them with uh, the corresponding equations in terms of y. So this is the natural log of y, and this one is y to the one-third power, okay? Now, another thing that's important to notice is this green line that I drew right here is bounded on top by the equation y to the one-third and bounded on bottom by the y-axis. But as soon as I pass this point right here, let me do that in black, as soon as I pass this point right here, zero comma one, Okay, then my lines, so let me draw another green little line right there, is bounded on top by y to the one third, but now it's bounded on bottom by the natural log of y. So what I've got going here is I'm gonna have to use two different integrals because my bounds for my uh, width of my rectangle change. So here we go, so C, whoops, I want black. Come on, work with me here, there we go. So I want to do, part C. So we're gonna have two different integrals. The first one is gonna find out basically the volume generated in this portion right here. Okay, so from a y value of zero to a y value of one, and these are dy, okay. And I'm gonna add the integral from one all the way up to this point right here. Remember, we're talking about y values, so I want this 6.406 business. So one to six point four zero six and then in the integrand goes the area of my shapes okay so stupid bell all right so in this first uh, set of parentheses we've got to figure out the length of this it's top minus bottom so it's y to the one-third minus zero so I mean um, so we're gonna have y 
to the one-third subtract zero. Okay, so then, okay, so that will find the volume of that first shape. Now let's find the volume of the second shape. So now we're looking at this region up here, okay? So once again, the top is still y minus y to the one-third, but now the, these lines are bounded on the bottom by the natural log of y. And you know what I realized I just did? All I've done is now find the length of those. What else do I need to do? <laughs> these are supposed to be the areas. I'm so sorry. I'm paying attention. Really, I am. So let me backtrack just a little bit. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, actually, I'm getting behind. I didn't realize what I was doing. So for this first, for this first region, this length right here, that length right there is what we just found. It was y to the one-third minus zero, right? So just y to the one-third. And then the height it says the height is six times their base, so six of those, so six times y to the one-third. So the area are those two things multiplied together. So six times y to the one-third squared. So when I square that, it's going to be two-thirds, so y to the two-thirds power. That is the area of my rectangles in that region. Okay, now I need to find the area of the rectangles in this region. So now instead of being y, y to the one-third minus zero, it's going to be y to the one-third minus the natural log of y. Okay, and so my height is going to be six times this. So my height is six times y to the one-third minus the natural log of y. So my area is this times this. So I've got 6 times y to the 1 third minus the natural log of y. And I've got two of them, so it's squared. Okay, And that will find me the uh, areas of those rectangles inside of there. Okay, So we type, uh, you can do these separately, or you can just type them all in at once. I'll, I'll do them separately so we make sure we get each of them uh, the same, then we'll add them together. So this first one, we get no, 3 point, so this is 3. 3.6000, zero, 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 bunch of zeros. And my calculator, I get a couple of numbers way down there. It just means that it's really 3.6. Uh, then plus uh, this guy right here, 5.31, let's see, 5.3177. Okay. Uh, so I add both of those together and we get. 8.9177, so 8.917 or 8.918, either way. That is the volume of the entire shape, okay? All right, problem number four. Find the volume of the solid whose base is bounded by these two graphs, y, uh, f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 2 minus x squared. If the cross sections perpendicular to the x axis are, and then we got our parts A and B. So let's graph this thing first. This one's not too bad. We can do this one by hand. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so let's see x squared. There we go. So f of x equals x squared. That looks like this shape we are all familiar with. Okay, something like that. Okay, and then this one right here, 2 minus x squared is just x squared flipped upside down and up 2. So I go up here and get points right there, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4. So something like that. Okay, so that little region right there is what we are looking at, okay? And the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. So we're talking about little lines like so, okay? Um, in fact, let me just do this. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. So we're dealing with one, two, and it's uh, here and here. So we got a point there and a point there. So I've got the blue line like so. So I'm just like zooming in on that. Something easier to talk about. My red lines like so. Okay. So once again, my they're perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, like that. All right. So part A. 
these lines in here represent uh, circles whose diameters are parallel uh, to the y-axis. Okay. So uh, that means, so parallel to the y-axis, so these are the diameters. So these are like, imagine these being like a coin slot. We're putting a coin halfway through each of these slots, okay? So this line, I'm just going to pick one of them. Let's pick this one right here, okay? That represents, on part A, it represents the diameter of a circle, okay? So what we're doing is we are adding up our areas of our circles from this point to that point. So that's from negative 1 to 1, and we want to find the areas of our circles. Uh, well, this length inside of here, this length right here, is simply the top equation minus the bottom equation. So our top equation is 2 minus x squared minus the bottom equation, which is x squared. So I can combine that together. It makes 2 minus 2x squared. That right there is the length of our little green line right here. Okay. So when I want to find the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. This is the diameter. So I want to cut this in half. So actually, my radius is going to be this divided by 2. Okay, so my areas are pi, my radius squared. In this case, my radius is 2 minus 2x squared cut in half. Okay, which those simplify to be 1 minus 1x squared if that's all you want to type into your calculator. All right, so uh, type that in. Let's see what we get. All right, 3 point three five one zero so going out three decimal places there's our answer right there all right part B uh, says that these cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis we're still dealing with the same picture that's nice are isosceles right triangles with one leg parallel to the y-axis and the other leg perpendicular to the xy plane so basically it's saying this green line is the leg parallel to the y-axis, okay? And the other leg is coming out of our paper, so it's perpendicular to this flat surface right here, perpendicular to the x-y plane. So let me draw a picture of what our shapes look like. So I've got that green line in region R, okay? And then the other leg comes up out of the paper and there's our triangle. And this side is the same as that side. They're isosceles right triangles, okay? So we are adding these isosceles right triangles up from negative 1 to 1. We just need to find out our area of our triangles and dx. So let's see, to find the area of this, it's the green line, which we already figured out earlier up here, it was 2 minus 2x squared. Remember, I don't want to cut it in half because I want the whole thing. Up here, I wanted to cut it in half because I needed the radius, but... <clears throat> Uh, up here, I just, down here, I just want 2 minus 2x squared. So this length right here is 2 minus 2x squared. Well, this side right here is the same thing. So when I find my area of a triangle, it's 1 half the base times the height. So we can just write it as 1 half times this squared. will give me the area of my triangle. So 1 half 2 minus 2x squared squared. And we just type that in our calculator and get our answer. And I got 2.133333. So it's 2.133 is our final answer for part B. All right, problem five says, consider the region bounded by the graph of f of x equals natural log of x and the lines x equals 5 and y equals 0. So let's draw a graph of those first, and then we'll start reading some of these questions down here. All right, so we've got, there's our y-axis, our x-axis. Okay, here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, let's shorten that up a little bit. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. Okay, so the natural log of x uh, looks something like this. It crosses through this point right here, like that, and looks something like that, okay? Um, the lines x equals 5 
one, two, three, four, five is a vertical line right here. Okay, and then y equals zero is uh, this line right here, right? Okay, so there is our uh, our region right here. Okay, uh, a couple things we want to know about it. We want to know where the intersection points are. So like this one right here, that intersection point is at five comma zero. This intersection point right here is at one comma zero. And this one looks scary, but it's actually really easy uh, to figure out. Um, it's what happens when you plug five into my blue equation, natural log of x. So I plug five in and I get natural log of five. So this uh, point right here is I plug in five and if I plug that in, it's where they intersect, so I plug 5 into either equation. So if I plug 5 into the blue one, I get natural log of 5. Okay, so there's our region right there with our, uh, with our uh, intersect intersection points. Uh, so that'll be nice to know. All right, so part A says that we want to find the volume of the solid with cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis if the Cross sections are semicircles. Okay, that's not too bad. So let's uh, draw on here. Perpendicular to the x, those are semicircles. So if I highlight just one of them, just so we kind of have an idea what's going on, so I'm going to highlight that guy right there. Uh, that is going to be, uh, they're semicircles, so it's going to be half of a circle, like so. Okay, so put some glue on that, sticks up in the air right there. So what I want to do is I want to add those semicircles, the areas of those semicircles from it looks like an x value of 1 to an x value of 5. To find the area of a semicircle, it's the area of a circle, but cut in half. Okay, uh, This length, this purple length right here, is the top equation minus the bottom equation. So it's going to be what? Natural log of x minus 0, so just the natural log of x. Okay, But remember, we want the radius, so I only want half of that. So when I plug this in for radius, I need to cut it in half. So my equation is going to be pi over 2, my radius, which is the natural log of x cut in half, okay, because the natural log of x is the whole thing, I only want half of it, and then I need to square it. So pi r squared cut in half, right, area of my circle cut in half will give me that. So that's why I type into my calculator and uh, we get 1.9 Zero seven three, so one point nine zero seven. That would be the volume of that if they were all semicircles. Okay, part B. Ooh, this one's a different question. We haven't seen this one yet. Set up an integral equation to find the value of x in the interval one to five that divides the solid from section A, so it's this guy, into two parts of equal volume. All right, so that is a little weird. Let's try to let's try to see if we can figure out uh, what is happening on this. So, oops, my eraser here. I'm going to erase that purple line. Okay. So let me get that black line back. Okay. So what we're trying to do. So imagine this three-dimensional object right here. Whoops. Um, I want to find out where it gets split in half. So I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use yellow. Okay. Well, let's not use yellow. Yellow's, well, that's kind of my only option. We'll do this light blue. I'm trying to figure out where does the volume of this shape, right, this gets split in half. So first off, let's think about this. If, if my volume is 1.907, if I divide that by 2, um, what I'm looking for is at what x value, okay, so what's the x value where this, the volume created by the exact same shapes, right, is equal to half of this, and half of that is 0 0.9536, okay? That's, that's half of that, okay? So there are a couple ways of looking at this, okay? Um, so this is part B. Um, the first thing we can do is I'm trying to figure out when, do, if I start integrating from here, and I want to end integrating at that magical value of x that makes it halfway, right? I mean, uh, half of the volume, okay? So what I can do, I can do the integral of the same thing. So pi halves natural log of x cut in half squared dx, but my bounds are going to be different. I want to know when does it, if I start at 1 
and I go to X, okay, and that's going to cause me a problem over here, but I'll talk about that in just a second. <clears throat> so if I go from 1 to this X value, whatever that X value is, I want to know when does this integral equal 0 0.953, okay, or, you know, or this actually would probably be better to write 1.907 divided by 2, just so we know where that came from. Okay, so I'm actually going to write that. 1.907 cut in half. Okay. Now, a couple things we have to do here. I can't have the same variable represented in my bounds as I do in my integrand. I want this to be my x value, so I want to keep that as x. So what I need to do is I need to change these to just be a dummy variable, what we call a dummy variable. So I'm just going to change it to t's. Okay, it has nothing to do with time or anything. I'm just going to change them to t's, so they are different than that variable. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change that to a t, change this to a t. Now, this right here, if I could solve this, if I could figure out what x, uh, um, uh, if I knew how to solve this, I could figure out what x value would make this true. And so it says, set up an integral equation to find the value uh, that divides the solid section part a into two parts. Uh, two parts of equal volume. I have set up my equation. It does not say to solve. I do not need to solve this. There's my answer right there. This equation, if I were to solve it for x, to get x by itself, I could find uh, this specific x value wherever it happens to be, and I'm just guessing here. I don't know where exactly where it's at, um, but I could find that specific x value that actually would give me a value for this integral of half of the volume that I need. Okay. Now, that's just one way of doing it. Let me show you another way of doing it. So, or, you could look at it like this. I know that if I take the integral for this region right here up until whatever the heck that x value is, it should give me the exact same value as if I did it for this region over here from x to 5. So we could set up, it, set up our equation like this. If I integrate from 1 to x, and once again, my integrand is the exact same thing, so I'll just go pi halves. Uh, I'm going to keep the t because I would have the same issue, right, uh, with needing to change the variable anyways. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it as t. Okay, so if I found this integral, okay, which is should be half of this, right, it should equal the other half of the shape, which can be found by starting at x, right, starting at that magical value of x and working towards 5. And then all this stuff just stays the same. We're just we're using the same uh, shapes, right? I'm not changing anything there. Okay, oops, I'm missing a parenthesis right there. Uh, dt. So that is another way of doing it. If I could solve this and find my x value that, that would make this statement true, um, it would um, give me that magical x value that splits this three-dimensional object created by these semicircles exactly in half by area. Not by length, but by area. By sorry, by volume. Uh, the half the volume is on one side of x. Half of the volume is on the other side of x. And just remember, it did not tell me to solve. It just told me to set up the equation. I do not need to solve. Okay, part C. It says find the volume of the solid with cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. Okay, we're switching things up now. If the cross sections are equilateral triangles. So first thing I want to do is I want to come through here and I want to erase, whoops, I want to erase all this stuff in here. Okay, because it's, we're no longer uh, perpendicular to the x-axis. We are now perpendicular to the y-axis. So now my lines are drawn like so. Okay, uh, so these shapes, uh, let me highlight one of them. So these shapes, that line right there, this is part C, running out of room. Part C, that line right there represents uh, the edge of an equilateral triangle. Okay, so something like that, where these sides are all the same. Uh, we had a problem earlier on. Uh, it was problem... 2a, where we figured out how to find the sorry, find the area of an equilateral triangle when I only know the edge. Uh, so if you want to see how to do that, uh, go back to uh, question number two, part a. Uh, but the equation for this, okay, so the area of that shape 
is, I'm gonna put a question mark right here to represent this length right here. But it is the square root of three divided by four times whatever the uh, edge of your triangle is squared, okay? Uh, that's the area for this shape. So let's see, to figure out this length on this problem, um, I'm gonna, I, these equations are written in terms of x, I need them to be uh, written in terms of y. All right, so, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, they're in terms of x. Well, this one's okay, because this is just x equals uh, five, okay? Uh, this one's gonna be a problem, I gotta switch it around, so it's natural log of x, so if I have the natural log of x equals y, to get x, sorry, to get, uh, yeah, the x by itself, I'm gonna rewrite this, so this is log base, you know, this is log base e, so this is really e to the y, is equal to x, that's this equation right here. Okay, e to the y uh, is equal to x. Okay, so uh, this uh, pinkish line right here, its length is going to be top five, so this length right here is five minus this equation right here, e to the y, okay? So here we go, we are taking these triangles which are stacked from zero, y value of zero, to a y value of natural log of five, to a y value of the natural log of five, and we are evaluating, let's say the area of these shapes is square root of three over four, uh, the length of my side, which is five minus e to the y squared. There's the area of my triangles, dy. We'll type that into our calculator and uh, we get 5.2983. So 5.298 would be our uh, volume of that shape generated by those triangles. Okay, part D, I got rid of that equation up here at the top. I'm gonna put part, part D up here so I have some room. Set up an integral equation to find now the value of y in the interval zero to natural log of five that divides a solid from section C into two parts. So we're doing the same thing in part D that we did in part B. I have this value right here. I wanna know what does the y value have to be? Where's that magical y value? In fact, let me come over here. I'm gonna erase that magenta line right there, okay? Uh, where is that magical uh, y value? Let's get out a color here. Let's do this. That splits that shape directly in half volume-wise. So where's it at, that y value? You know, there's, there's my guess, I think it's some place. Right? It's probably a little bit lower. This probably has more volume than that does, but that's okay. Uh, you get the idea. Where is that y, uh, y value? I don't know why I squared it, that's weird. Okay, so where's this y value located? So, here we go, so part D once again, there are two ways to look at this. I can think of it as, hey, when uh, does the volume of this piece, right here, the volume of that piece, equal half of my answer from part C? The other thing, I could also do it with this half up here. So really, there's three ways of doing it. When does this half equal the half of that, right? Or when does this region right here, the volume created by that region right there, equal the volume created by this region right here. And it does not matter which one you do. They're both, they're both right. So here we go. So I've got, let's do that uh, where it's cut in half. The, re, the value I found is cut in half. So we've got, um, we're stacking this from zero to that y value, wherever that y value happens to be. And I don't know where it's at, so we're just gonna put y, right? Of our areas of our shapes, which is gonna be the same equation. Square root of three over four, five minus e to the y. And I'm gonna have the same problem I did before, okay? Uh, I don't wanna use a y value because it's I wanna keep it different from this y value, so I'm just gonna use a dummy variable. It can be whatever you want. I'm just gonna use t. Makes for a good dummy variable. Uh, so that's gonna be squared dt. And I wanna know when does this equal half of our answer from part c? So 5.298 cut in half. And that would be the answer to part D. It says set it up. It does not say solve, just set it, set, set it up. If we were to solve this for Y, to get Y by itself, it would tell us that Y value that cuts that three-dimensional object perfectly in half uh, as far as volume is concerned. The other way of doing it, if this way makes more sense, is when does the volume of this piece equal the volume of that piece? 
So to find that first piece, it's once again zero to y. Same, we're dealing with the same shapes. So it's still square root of three over four, five minus e to the t dt. When does this integral equal this region right here? So I'm starting at y and I'm ending at natural log of five. So starting at y, ending at natural log of five. Once again, I do not care. I mean, this is the same thing, so I'm not gonna change anything. Minus e to the t uh, dt, and I need one more parenthesis in there. Ah, I did the same thing over here, forgot my parenthesis, okay? And this equation would be just fine. Once again, you're not solving it. If you were to solve it for y, uh, it would tell you that magical value that splits it right in half, but we don't need to solve it. We just have to write out the equation. And that takes care of that homework.